Hi and welcome to our new YouTube tutorial. In this video we're going to be talking about one of the most popular and commonly used CSS extension or CSS preprocessor called SAS. In this crash course we will go through all the main topics of SAS. We will refer to the basics of SAS and also we'll go through some advanced topics as well. So before we dive deeper into different topics and features of SAS, first of all I want to talk about what SAS itself is. The abbreviation itself stands for Syntactically Awesome Style Sheets. It is an extension to CSS, CSS preprocessor, which makes the code more powerful and flexible so that you can write CSS in a much easier way. SAS gives us the ability to write the CSS code like a programming language because we can use variables, functions, conditional statements and so on. Alright, let's talk a little about some features of SAS. As we already said, we can use variables, functions, conditional statements. But besides that, one of the most important things about SAS is that it allows us to split our styles into different files more efficiently and conveniently so that we can avoid putting all the styles in just a single CSS file. The next thing that I want to talk about is how SAS works. In general, the browser itself cannot read and understand the SAS code. We write SAS, but eventually we need to translate it into the standard CSS code. This process is called transpiling. Sometimes you may hear compilation instead of transpilation. Both of them are similar processes. The only difference is that in case of compilation, human readable code is translating into machine readable code. And in case of transpilation, human readable code is translating into another human readable language, in this case, SAS into CSS. After transpilation, the browser can read standard CSS code and render it on the page. Alright, one more thing that I want to refer to is an extension of the SAS file. You can use either SAS or SCSS, which stands for SASI CSS. Both of them work fine, but there are some differences in syntax. In the case of SAS, we need to protect some rules. We don't have curly braces and semicolons, and therefore code is indentation sensitive. Besides that, there are other slight differences, but I'm not going to go deeper into the details, because throughout this tutorial we're going to use SCSS as an extension, which is a more popular approach, and it is much like standard CSS where we use curly braces, semicolons, and we don't have any strict rules about indentation and white spaces. For our information, SAS was designed in 2006 by Hampton Catlin, and then it was developed by Natalie Weisenbaum and Chris Epstein. Alright, so I think it's time to start to write SAS, but before that we need to set up some tools. There are a couple of ways to set up the SAS working environment, one of the most popular ways is to use the Node SAS compiler, which requires a little bit more complex installation process. I'm not going to use it because it is a crash course, so throughout this tutorial we will use one of the VS Code packages called Live SAS Compiler, which will help us to compile the SAS code into CSS. Okay, so I have created a new folder on the desktop called SAS Crash Course. Let's go ahead and open it in VS Code and create the HTML file. I'm going to call it index.html. Then I'm going to create the basic HTML document. For that, let's use Emmet. We need to place here the exclamation mark and then hit enter or tab. So here we go. Let's go ahead and change the title. I'm going to insert here SAS Crash Course. Next, I'm going to create here a new folder Let's call it scss, in which I'm going to create a file called main.scss. Okay, let's go ahead and run the project to the browser. For that, I'm going to use another VS Code package called a live server, which allows us to run the project live to the browser and make changes and updates without refreshing the page each time. So I recommend you to install and use this package. OK, I'm going to place the editor and the browser side by side, like so, and get started. 
Let's open the main.scss file and insert here some CSS code and see what will happen. I'm going to change the background color of the body element. Let's make it red. So if I save, then of course nothing will change on the page because the code is not compiled and also we haven't linked CSS to the HTML yet. So now we need to use the package called live sas compiler. So let's install it. Actually, I have already installed it. Let's go ahead and click down below to watch sas. Once we click it, then two new files will be generated in the scss folder. The first one is main.css where you will find the compiled code. As you see, we have here body element with a red background color. As for the second file, you can just ignore it right now. Okay, so finally, in order to make the code work, we need to link that newly generated CSS file to HTML. Let's open link tag in the head element and specify here the path of the file. We have scss folder and then main.css. So now the background color is changed. If I change it, let's make it green, then it will change on the page automatically. Also, it will be compiled in the main.css file as well. All right, so we have successfully set up our working environment and we're good to go and discuss the first topic in SAS, which is variables. In general, the variable is like a container which stores some data values and then those values can be used for multiple times. Variables exist in standard CSS as well, but right now they have partial support in modern web browsers. And also I think that SAS variables are more convenient and flexible than the standard CSS variables. Let's go ahead and start to write some code. So in order to demonstrate how SAS variables work, at first I'm going to create a couple of HTML elements. Let's create nav tag with the class nav in which we will have a list element next i'm going to insert here li element followed by the link which will have the content home i'm going to duplicate li element three times and then change the content the second one is going to be about us then let's insert here gallery and finally contact. All right, next I'm going to create section element with the class banner. It will include heading, I mean H1 heading element with the content, this is a heading. And also create the paragraph with some dummy text. All right. So the last part will be a footer. Let's open footer tag with class footer. Inside the footer, I'm going to insert H3 heading elements with the text footer heading. And lastly, create the paragraph again with some dummy text. All right, that's all about the HTML document. Now we can write some SAS code. Suppose that this is our web page and we're going to use several colors. I mean the colors like primary, secondary and tertiary for multiple times. So instead of using them manually, as it happens in case of standard CSS, we can store color values into the variables and then use those variables when we need them. All right, let's see what I'm talking about. So to create a sus variable, we need to use the dollar sign which should be followed by the name of the variable, let's say color primary. And we need to assign to it some color value, let's say orange. I'm going to create two more color variables. The second one is going to be the color secondary. Let's use here gray. And then create the third variable. I'm going to call it color tertiary. Let's assign to it royal blue all right so the variables for the colors are created besides that i want to create three more variables for different font sizes 
The first one is going to be for a large font. So let's call it font LG. Let's make it 40 pixels. Then create another variable for medium size. I'm going to call it font MD. Let's assign to it 30 pixels. And lastly, create third variable for small size. I'm going to call it font SM with the value 20 pixels. All right, so we have created a couple of variables and now it's time to use them. Let's change the background color of the nav element. I'm going to select it using class name nav. Then as the background color, let's use color primary. So as you can see, the background color of the nav element is changed. And if we take a look at the main.css file, we will find that there are not any variables. We have here just the pure CSS code. So our SAS code is compiled into CSS successfully. All right, let's go back to the SCSS file. I'm going to select the first heading element. And I'm going to increase its font size. Let's use the variable called font lg and as a color let's use color secondary and also i'm going to place it in the center using text align center all right so as you can see all the styles are applied and we did that in a more dynamic way using variables let's go ahead and give some styles to the second heading as well i'm in the footer heading let's select it at first let's make its font size medium As a color, use again color secondary. And finally, place the heading in the center using text align center. So, as you can see, we used here the same color twice, and I think it is a good moment to demonstrate how useful and dynamic the SAS variables are. Let's say we want to change the color for both headings, then you don't have to do it for each element separately. You can just change the value of the variable. Let's use here, for example, green. So you can see that the color is changed for both headings. So that's the power of SAS variables. It makes the code more dynamic. All right, the next thing that I want to talk about is the scope of SAS variables. In general, we have a global scope and a local scope. In this case, those variables are created on the global scope. But if you create the variable inside of the curl braces, then it will have a local scope. So I want to talk a little about the relationship of those scopes. Let's create a variable with a name color secondary inside the h1 heading element and assign to it a value red. So if we save, then the color of the first heading will change and become red. But the second heading, which uses the same color, won't be changed. As you see, it is still gray. It happens because we created a new variable inside the h1. It has a local scope and therefore it doesn't have any influence on the variable, which has the same name and is created on the global scope. If you want to use this variable on a global scope as well, then you can add to it an exclamation mark and the keyword global. So, as you can see, the color of the footer heading is changed as well. Alright, so that's the way how SAS variable scopes work. In general, I don't recommend to create local variables. Always try to declare the variables on the global scope. But anyway, if you come across somewhere such things, you won't be confused. Alright, so that's it about the variables. And now I want to talk about the next topic, which is called nesting. Actually, nesting is a great and useful feature of SAS because it allows us to avoid writing many lines of CSS. We can define nesting as a shortcut to create the CSS rules. First of all, I'm going to delete this line of code because we don't need it anymore. Suppose that we want to give some styles to the li and the link elements. For that, as you already know, we can just simply select li. Let's get rid of those default bullets using list style none. 
So that's the standard CSS approach. We selected the child of the nav element. In SAS, we can do it more efficiently. Instead of writing this code outside of the nav element, we can insert it inside the curly braces. So let's grab this code and paste it here. As you see, we have the same result. Code is working. And if we go to the main.css file, you will see that here we have the standard CSS code. li is placed outside of the nav element. All right, as you know, the link element is placed inside of the li, so we can select it here inside the color braces of li element. Let's get rid of default underline using text decoration none. So as you see, this code is working as well. We don't have here underlines anymore. Actually, I'm going to grab this code and place it outside of the li element because I don't recommend to create many levels of nesting. After all, it will make your code more complex and I think it will no longer be flexible and efficient. Okay, let's add some more styles to the link element. I'm going to increase the font size. Let's use here the variable called font sm. And also change the color. Use here color secondary. Okay, suppose that we want to create a hover effect on the link element. So I want to show you how to deal with the pseudo classes in case of the nesting. You may think that we can just simply write here hover with some style. Let's change the color. Use here color tertiary. So if we hover, then nothing will happen. Hover effect doesn't work. So something is wrong here. Let's go ahead and check the compiled code and see how it looks like. So you see that we have here the space. It's not correct syntactically and that's why the hover effect doesn't work. So in order to fix that problem we can use a special character called ampersand which refers to the parent element, in this case link element. So if we hover again then it will work and also if we check the CSS file we will find that space is removed. Okay, let's use another example. Actually, we can use the same nesting technique with class names as well. Suppose that we have to change the background color of the banner. Let's set background color to color primary. Next, let's add the class to the h1 heading element and the paragraph. Use banner heading and banner paragraph. So now we can use nesting. We need here ampersand heading. Let's insert here those styles. So as you can see we have here the same result but we used here nesting. The same we can do with the paragraph. We need ampersand paragraph. Let's change the color. Make it color tertiary. Alright, that's the way how nesting works in SAS. Let's move on and discuss the next topic which is called a mixin. Mixin is an awesome tool to protect one of the rules of developers which is do not repeat yourself. So what is mixin? Mixin is a block of code that allows us to group the CSS styles that we may reuse multiple times. It is like the variables, but it's more powerful and dynamic because you can use a bunch of styles for different elements. As you see, we gave some styles to the banner heading and also to the footer heading. They have some similar styles, I mean the color and text align. And actually, that's the case where we can use the mixing. In order to create it, we need to use at sign, which should be followed by the keyword mixing. And also we need to name it, let's say, heading styles. Then we have to open curl braces where we have to insert a block of code. So as we said, both headings have the same color and the same text alignment. So we can grab those two styles and place them inside of the mixing. Then I'm going to delete those styles for both headings. Now in order to apply them to both headings, we need to do the following. We have to use keyword include with the add sign which should be followed by the name of the mixing, heading styles. So as you see, we have here the same result. 
Let's take a look at the main.css file. So I can see that styles are assigned to both elements individually. So once again, you can agree with me that the SAS code is much efficient and flexible. So that's the basic use case of mixins. Besides that, we can use them as the functions. I mean, we can pass some parameters and arguments. As you can see, both headings have different font sizes. But despite this, we can define those different font sizes inside of the mixin. For that, after the name of the mixin, we need to place parentheses. And inside of them, we have to insert a parameter. For that, we need again dollar sign and the name of the parameter. Let's say font size. Actually, you can consider parameter as a variable as well. After that, I'm going to define the font size. And we have to assign to it a parameter that we have defined here. So inside of the mixing, we create something like a general draft for the font size. And then we define the specific values for each heading element manually. First of all, let's delete those properties. Then we have to define the arguments for mixings. For that, we need to open parentheses. For the first heading, we need to use font LG. As for the footer heading, let's use font MD. So you can see that we have the same result, but we achieved it more efficiently and dynamically. In the CSS file, again, we have all those styles assigned to the headings individually, as it happens in standard CSS. We can go even more farther. You can define default parameters inside the mixing. And actually, this feature makes the SAS code similar to the code of the programming language, especially the JavaScript. Let's see what I'm talking about. If we assign to this parameter some value, let's say 50 pixels, then it will be applied to the elements if you don't define arguments manually. So if I delete the argument for the footer heading, then its font size will increase and become 50 pixels. As for the banner heading, its font size is not changed. All right, before we move on to the next topic, I want to show you one more feature of a mixing. If we are going to use the property which might have more than one value separated by a comma, then the parameter inside of the mixing should be followed by three dots. Suppose that we want to create a hover effect on the footer heading, and on hover, we need to change the color and the background color. And also, besides that, we need to use transition. We can do it like this. Let's add hover to H3 using nesting. Then set color to color tertiary. As for the background color, let's make it color primary. If we hover, then the styles will be applied. But as I said, I'm going to use transition. For that, let's create a new mixing. I'm going to call it heading transition. Next, we have to insert here the parameter. Let's call it par, followed by three dots. And then use transition property. Assign to it value parameter. So in order to apply the transition to the footer heading, we need to use this mixing using include. We need here the name of the mixing heading transition. And inside of the parentheses, we have to insert the values of transition property. That is color, followed by the duration, 0.5 seconds. And the next one is going to be background color with the duration, let's say one second. So now if we hover over the heading, then the styles will change smoothly. So it means that the transition is working fine. So remember that when you're going to use property, which can take several values separated by a comma, then inside of the mixing, the parameter should be followed by three dots. If we remove them, then in the terminal, we will get an error. So do not forget to use those three dots with a parameter. All right, so that's it about the mixings. Let's move on and talk about another feature of SAS, which is called an extend. As the definition of an extend, we can say that it allows one selector to inherit the styles of another selector. Like the mixing, extend allows us to write a cleaner and concise code. 
In order to understand better what XTime can do, let's write some code. First of all, I'm going to get rid of some code from here because it's getting bigger and it might confuse you. Let's comment those mixings out. Then create some styles like so. I'm going to create a separate block of code. For that we can use a new class, let's call it heading. And then let's add to it some styles. Let's set color to color primary. Then change the font size. Make it font LG. Also I'm going to set background color to color secondary. And finally align text in the center. So we created a couple of styles and now in order to apply those styles to the heading elements, in other words to inherit those styles, we can use extend with add sign. And then we need to specify the selector, in this case heading. So here you can see that styles are applied to both heading elements. Also if we check the CSS file you will find that all three selectors share the same style and they are separated by a comma. So we used less code and managed styling elements more concisely and dynamically. Like mixing, extend allows you to reuse some styles and protect the rule, do not repeat yourself. Alright, so that's the way how extend works, now we can move on to the next topic. The next topic that I'm going to discuss is actually the part of any programming language. So in this part you will learn about functions in SAS. If you are familiar with at least the basics of any programming language, then you should know what functions are. But if not, that's not a problem because it's not really hard to understand. In SAS you can create your custom functions and also it provides some built-in functions as well. Before we write some code, let's talk a little about what function itself is. When you want to run some code over and over again, then you can execute or run function each time. So you create function once with some statements. For example, you can make some calculation or manipulate the colors and then when you want to use it, you need to call this function. Alright, actually it would be better if we see all those things in practice. In order to create the function, you need to place at sign with keyword function. Then it should be followed by the name of the function, let's say font size. Actually the name of the function can be optional, you can call it what you want. Then after the name we need to open parentheses and then call the braces in which we can insert a block of code. Before we write here any statement I'm going to insert the parameter inside of the parentheses, let's call it size. So using this function we are going to double the size of the font. In order to do that we need to multiply the size by 2. Actually this code is not quite enough, the function will not give us any value until we use keyword return. Again with add sign. So as you can see this function is much like the functions of JavaScript. So in order to make this function work I mean to double the font size we need to call it and whatever we insert as an argument it will be multiplied by 2. So let's change the font size of the paragraph. So here we need to call a function and inside the parentheses we have to insert an argument. You can write here some values like 10 pixels, 20 pixels and so on but I'm going to use here the variable phone sn. So, as you can see, the font size of the paragraph is increased. As you know, it equals 20 pixels and once the function is executed, it becomes 40 pixels. You may think that there is no need to use a function here, we can directly use 40 pixels. And actually that's absolutely right, but when you work on big projects, then the functions could be very useful. Now I just showed you how to create them and how to use them. Ok, like it was in case of mixins, we can define the default values for the parameters. For example, if we assign to size some value, let's say 25 pixels, and then we select footer paragraph, and define the font size, in which we just call the function. Then the font size of the footer paragraph will become 50 pixels, because 
by default the size equals 25 pixels and then it is multiplied by 2. So it will happen until we define the argument for the function manually. So if we insert here, let's say phone MD, then the phone size will increase and the default value will no longer be applied. All right. That's all about the custom functions. As we said, SAS also provides several built-in functions. I'm not going to go through all of them. I will show you just a couple of commonly used built-in functions. Let's use the first one, which is called Lighten. I'm going to work on the navigation, which has the background color set to orange. So a function called Lighten allows us to make the color lighter by some specific percentage. So we can write Lighten then wrap the color primary with parentheses. So the color is going to be the first argument. As for the second one, we can indicate here the specific percentage value, let's say 20%. So as you can see, background color of nav element became slightly lighter. And if we check CSS file, then the nav element will have the proper color. In the same way, we can use a function called darken which does the opposite. It makes the color darker with a specific percentage. So you see that in this case, background color became darker by 20%. All right. So those functions, I mean, lighten and darken are frequently used with hover effects. But besides that, we have some other functions as well, which we use with colors. The next one is going to be transparentize. It allows us to make the color transparent by a specific value. As the second argument, we can indicate here the value from 0 to 1. Let's insert here 0 0.6. So as you can see, color became a little bit transparent. If we check the compiled code and see what we have here, we will see that the color is converted into the RGBA value, which has the opacity 0.4. If we change the second argument and make it 1, then the background color of nav element will be 100% transparent. And also if we check the CSS file, the opacity will be zero. All right, that's the way how the transparentize function works. We have another function called mix. It allows us to mix two different colors. For example, let's insert here, blue and green. As you can see, we got here a mixed color. Besides that, we can insert here the third argument, which is going to be the percentage value. It will belong to the first color. So if we insert here, let's say 10%, then in the mixed color, 10% will be blue and the rest 90% will be green. So using the third argument, you can define the ratio of colors in the mixed color. All right, that's all about functions in SAS. Let's move on and talk about another topic. Previously, we talked about the extend, which allows us to reuse a bunch of styles for different elements multiple times. But as you remember, in case of the extend, we created a new class, assigned to it some styles, and then extended them to the different elements. So in that case, we created a new class, but what could we do if we didn't need to create a new class? One of the solutions is to use placeholder selectors. They were created to solve this exact problem. So before we use the placeholder selectors, I'm going to clean up our code a little bit. Let's comment this paragraph and the function out. So here we have a class heading, which then is extended to the heading elements. If we check the main.css file, in compiled code, we will find that there exists the class heading. Even if we don't extend it to any element, then class heading will still exist in compiled code. So in the case of the placeholder selectors, we have a different situation. In order to create a placeholder selector here, instead of a dot, we just need to place percentage sign. So if we check the main.css file, you will find that the placeholder selector with its styles doesn't exist here. But if we get back extend, let's change dot into a percentage sign. 
then those styles will be applied to h1 and h3. And if we go again to CSS file, you will see that h1 and h3 share the same styles and we don't have here an additional class. So the placeholder selector allows us to create a cleaner and concise code. In case of creating a new class, if you need it just to extend some styles to other elements and the class itself is not used anywhere else, then it would be better if we use placeholder selectors. Alright, so that's it about the placeholder selectors. Now I'm going to talk about another very important topic in SAS called imports and partials. SAS allows us to split our entire SAS code into different files and make the project well structured. It is a really huge advantage of this technology. It is important especially when you work with big projects. Instead of having just a single file in which you put tons of lines of code, you can split it into different files. It will cause less confusion and complication and will make your file structure more convenient. So in this part we are going to talk about imports and partials in SAS. As you see we have here just one scss file, I mean main.scss, in which we put all the code. Suppose that we want to create a new scss file just for testing. Let's call it test.scss. Then inside that file I'm going to select one of our elements, let's say footer heading and change its font style and make it italic. So if we save then nothing will happen on the page. As you see there are generated two new files test.css and test.css.map as it was in case of main.scss file. Now if we want to apply the styles from that newly created file we have to link the test.css file to the HTML. Actually, we don't need to do it because it's not quite handy to link all the files separately. So that's the moment when we need to use import. So we don't need those new CSS files. I'm going to delete them. We're going to compile all the code, I mean the code from different CSS files, in the main.css file. Next, I'm going to rename the test.scss file and place here underscore at the beginning. In this case, I mean, when you name the scss file with an underscore, there won't be generated any new css files. The only thing that we need to do is to connect this code to the main.css file. For that we have to use import. So let's go to the main.scss file and at the beginning write at sign, then import. And inside the quotes we have to specify the path of the file. Actually, we don't need to specify here the folder because both files are placed in the same directory. We just need to write the name of the file without underscore and also the extension. In general, you can use them, but it's not mandatory. The compiler can look for the files without underscore and file extension. So if we save, then everything will work perfectly. As you see, the footer heading got a new style. And also if we check the main.css file, we'll find the compiled code from the test.scss file. Alright, so this is a little example how import works in SAS. File like underscore test.scss is called a partial. When you work with big projects, you will have lots of partials and more complex file structures. We plan to release a couple of SAS projects on our YouTube channel. So you will get a good practice in using imports and partials, so stay tuned. Alright, so until now we've been talking about the basics of SAS and now, as I promised, we're going to go through some advanced topics of SAS. The first thing that we're going to refer to is data types in SAS. Actually, if you're familiar with any of the programming languages, then you should already know what data means. But if not, it's no problem because it's very simple to understand. So in SAS we have seven different data types. They are numbers, strings, colors, lists, maps, booleans and null. Let's go ahead and describe each of them. I want to tell you that the most of these data types were already used in this tutorial, but now I'm going to describe them in details. First of all, I'm going to comment the entire code out in the scss file and also in the HTML file. 
I will use some dummy styles. I'm not going to create the HTML elements because I just want to describe what kind of data types we have in SAS. Let's start with numbers. Let's select some dummy class, let's say numbers. So SAS supports integers as we use it in the case of, let's say, font weight, 400. Then we can have numbers with decimals. Let's select line height with value 1.5. And also we can have numbers with different measurement units. Let's select font size with 20 pixels. Besides pixels, we can use RAM, also EM, and the percentage. So all of those values are valid numbers in SAS. Next we have strings. Actually, strings represent some text values and they can be expressed by quotes or without quotes. For example, we can write phone family with some different values. Let's say Josephine Sons, Ariel, and Sans Serif. So here we have three string values. The first one is written within quotes because it consists of two different words. As for the second and the third one, they are string values as well, but they are expressed without quotes. Besides the font family property, we can use font weight with bold and font style with italic. All right, so those are the strings. Next we have colors. Each color value that we can use is the SAS data type. We can use name colors, for example, red. Also, we can use hexadecimal values, like so. It's the red color as well. Also, we have RGB values. Let's select border color with RGB 255 and zeros. And also we can have RGBA in which we can define the opacity of the color. Okay, besides that, colors can be written in HSL values. Actually, it stands for hue, saturation and lightness. It takes three values. Let's pass here 0, 100% and 50%. Okay, so those are different color values, and again, color is a SAS data type. The next data type that I want to talk about is lists. Basically, lists are like arrays. You might have some knowledge about arrays. So the list is a data type that can store multiple values. For example, we can define margin with different values. Let's say 10 pixels, 15 pixels, 5 pixels and 20 pixels. In this case, the values are separated by space, but besides that, the values can be separated by commas as well. For example, we can use again phone family with the values railway, doses, and lato. So this is a comma separated list, but each value itself is a string in the list. Besides that, we can create a list which will include different data types. For example, if we use border, it can have values like a number, one pixel, string, solid, and the color, red. All right, so that's it about lists in SAS. Next, I'm going to move on to maps. Actually, the map can store the data in key value pairs. It is like an associative array, which means that it stores both keys and values associated with those keys. Syntactically, maps should be surrounded by parentheses and the mentioned key value pairs should be separated by commas. All right, let's create a map and call it colors. Then insert here some colors. As a key, I'm going to insert here primary. Let's assign to it red. Then I'm going to have secondary, green, and tertiary, blue. 
As you see, after the first and second pairs, we placed comma. As for the last one, we don't need to use it. So that's the map. It contains some data and now we can use this data in the following way. Suppose that we want to change the color and the background color of one of the elements. Let's say H1. So in order to get the color from the map, we have to use a method called mapGet which should take two arguments. The first one is going to be the name of the map, in this case, colors. As for the second one, it should be a key. At this time, let's use primary. So if we check the compiled code, then we'll find that H1 has a color set to red. In the same way, we can change the background color. Let's use again map get. We need here the name of the map colors and then the name of the key secondary. So as you can see, everything works fine. All right, instead of those strings, I mean primary, secondary, tertiary, we can use numbers. For example, we can change in the right here, one, two, three. Also change the keys down below. So if we check the compiled code, we will get the same result. Alright, so that's the way how we can create maps and how we can access to the data. Actually, it's a really handy tool. Using maps, you can organize and structure your code in a much better way. Okay, so the next data type which I want to talk about is Boolean. Actually, it has two possible values, true or false. Basically, those values are used with conditional statements like if-else statements, which will be discussed later on. So right now I'm not going to go deeper with the boolean data type, just remember that it has two values, true or false. And the last data type that I'm going to describe is null. Null is empty, it doesn't have any value at all. So we can say that it represents an empty value. One thing that you should know is that it's case sensitive, I mean you should strictly write null with lower case, otherwise it will be just plain string value. You can use null when you want the value of something to be nothing. Alright, now it's time to introduce you to another topic in SAS, which is called interpolation. This topic is not unique only to SAS, because you may come across this thing in different program languages as well. For example, if you are familiar with the template literals in the ES6 version of JavaScript, then interpolation is quite similar to it. So what does the interpolation mean? In simple words, we can create the variables and then using interpolation we can use those variables in either selectors or property names or their values. Let's go ahead and see in practice what I'm talking about. First of all, I'm going to create a couple of variables. The first one is going to be, let's say, variable b. Let's assign to it a string value, border. Let's create another variable and call it C and assign to it color. Okay, let's say we have the H2 heading element and we want to assign to it a couple of properties and values. Suppose that we want to use here property called box sizing with the value border box. And also let's say we need to use border with the following values, one pixel, solid and blue. Besides that, let's add here some more styles. Let's use color with the value red and background color green. Okay, so as you can see, we have used here border twice and also we have here color twice as well. So that's the moment when we can see how the interpolation works in SAS. We have here variable B with the value border and we can pass this variable in both cases where we are using a border. In order to do that, let's delete border from here. Then we have to place the pound sign, which should be followed by the curly braces, in which we have to pass the name of the variable. Let's do the same for the second border as well. So if we save and then check the compiled code in the main.css file, 
you will see that everything works fine, we still have borders in both cases. In the same way we can replace the colors as well, let's write again the pound sign and inside the curl braces, insert the variable C. So again, everything works fine, we have here the colors. Alright, so that's the way how interpolation works in SAS. That was a kind of simple example, but in the real world you can make your SAS code much more concise and flexible using interpolation. Alright, let's go ahead and move on to another SAS topic, which is called loops. Basically, you can meet loops in almost every programming language, and it is a really handy tool. If you are not familiar with loops yet, then we can define it in the following way. Loops are used when you want to run the same block of code over and over again, each time with a different value. We have multiple types of loops in SAS, and we are going to describe relatively popular ones that are for loop and each loop. Alright, let's go ahead and create some HTML elements. I'm going to open p element with the class paragraph1. Then insert here some dummy text. Then I'm going to duplicate this code three times and change the class names as paragraph 2, 3 and 4. Suppose that we want to assign to each paragraph a different background color. In CSS we have to select each paragraph separately and then assign to each one a different background color. Using for loop we can do it in a much more simple and flexible way. At first I'm going to create a map which will include four different colors. I'm going to call it colors. Then insert here a couple of key value pairs. I'm going to insert here one red. Then the second color is going to be green. Then we will have blue and orange. Alright, so we have here four different colors and I'm going to assign to the first paragraph color red, then to the second one color green and so on. For that we have to use for loop and in order to create it we need to use a couple of keywords. At first I'm going to write the code and then I will explain what those keywords mean. So we need add sign followed by the for keyword. Then I'm going to insert here the variable i. Next we have another keyword from one through 4. So here we use the variable i which is something like iterator or counter. It changes the value on each iteration. In this case on the first iteration i is going to be 1, on the second iteration it should be 2, then 3 and 4. Next keywords, I mean from and through, as their names suggest mean that i will change its values from 1 through 4 and the code block will stop running as soon as the fourth iteration finishes. Alright, enough to talk, let's write the code. I'm going to select paragraph. Instead of writing here the numbers manually, I'm going to use here interpolation. We need pound sign and inside the color braces I'm going to insert the variable i. And then use background color. In order to get colors from the map, as you already know, we have to use a function called mapget, which takes two arguments. The first one is the name of the map, colors. As for the second one, we have to pass here a key. Again, instead of numbers, let's insert here variable i. Alright, before I save this code and see the result, let me explain what's happening here. On the first iteration, i equals to 1. It means that we have here paragraph 1. It gets the value of the first pair from the map, which is red. Then on the second iteration, i becomes 2. We have here paragraph 2. And it gets the second color from the map, which is green. The same happens on the third iteration and on the fourth one. After that, the code stops execution. So as you can see, each paragraph has a different background color. And if we check the compiled code, you will see that clearly. So that's the way how for loop works, and you agree that it's really a handy tool. Instead of selecting each paragraph and assigning to it a different background color, we can write just these couple of lines of code, which is more efficient and flexible. One more thing regarding for loop is that instead of keyword through, we can use to. 
which means that there will be only three iterations because in this case 4 is not included i will become 1 then 2 then 3 and after that the block of code will stop the execution if we check css code you will see that we have here only the first three paragraphs so that's the main difference between keywords through and to all right that's all about for loop next we're going to talk about each loop each loop like the for loop executes the block of code over and over again until the number of elements is expired let's see in practice what those words mean and how each loop works i'm going to comment this code out also let's make some changes in the html document instead of those numbers in class names i'm going to use color names i mean red green blue and orange Suppose that we want to do the same here, I mean to assign to each paragraph proper background color. For that let's create a list in the main.scss file. I'm going to call it colors and assign to it four different colors, red, green, blue and orange. So in this case the values are separated by space, but as you know we can separate them by commas as well. In both cases list will work. So in order to create each loop, we need the keyword each with add sign. Then we need to place here a variable which should represent the current value from the list. Let's call it color. Then it should be followed by the keyword in. And lastly, we need to place here the list name, colors. So on the first iteration, the variable color will take the first value from the list, which is red. Then on the second one, it will take the green. On the third one, blue and on the last iteration the color is going to be orange. After that we have to select the paragraph inside of the curly braces. As you remember we added to the class names colors like paragraph red, paragraph green and now in order to select the paragraphs I'm not going to use those color names. Instead of that we should use interpolation. Let's place here pound sign with curly braces and pass here the variable color. Next, let's assign to the paragraph background color. And again, instead of writing here any color name, we need to use the variable color. Okay, so let me explain what will happen here. On the first iteration, the value of the color variable will be red, the first member of the list. We will have here paragraph red and its background color will become red as well because we passed here the variable color. On the second iteration, the color should be green. We will have a paragraph green and its background color will be green as well. The same will happen on the third and fourth iterations. Paragraph blue will get the blue color and paragraph orange will get the orange background. So if I save this code, then all four paragraphs will get their proper background colors. And if we check the compiled code in the main.css file, you will see that clearly. All right, so that's the way how loops work in SAS. Now I'm going to move on to the next topic, which will be the last in this crash course. I'm going to talk about if directive. Actually, it is quite similar to if or if else conditional statements that exist in almost every programming language. So if directive takes sus expression and executes the block of code according to some condition. In order to demonstrate what if directive looks like and how it works, let's write some examples. I'm going to comment this code out. Let's create an h3 heading element with some content, let's say if directive. Then go to the main.scss file and select this element. So in order to create the if directive, we need to write add sign and then keyword if. It should be followed by the parentheses in which we should insert some condition. For simplicity, let's just write here something like two is greater than four. And then inside the curly braces insert some style, let's say color red. So if I save this code then the heading element will have its default black color. It happens because the condition inside the if directive is false, 2 is less than 4 and therefore the block of code is not executed. If we check the main.css file we won't have here the h3 heading. So in order to execute the block of code the condition should be true. If we just change this comparison sign and write 2 is less than 4, 
Then the code will be executed and the color of the heading will become red. So remember that if the condition inside the if directive is true, actually it is a boolean value, we discussed it when we were talking about the sus data types, then the block of code will be executed. But if it is false, then the code won't be executed. Alright, that's it about if directive. Sometimes we may have to use if else if else statement. In order to see how it works, I'm going to use another example. Let's comment this code out and then create a mixin. I'm going to call it heading size. Then inside the parentheses, insert a parameter and call it size. So at first, I'm going to create if statements. As a condition, I'm going to insert here the following size double equals to large. I used here the double equal sign, it's known as a comparison operator and compares values on the left and right sides and returns a boolean value either true or false. Let's insert here the block of code. I'm going to set font size to 45 pixels. So if the size equals to large then the condition will be true and the font size will become 45 pixels. Now I want to consider other cases as well, I mean we need to create else if statement and as the condition, let's insert here, size, double equals, medium. So if this condition is true, then I want the font size to be, let's say, 30 pixels. And lastly, let's create L statement. Actually, it doesn't have its condition. We just need to insert here, font size, equal to 15 pixels. Alright, let me explain what these statements mean. First of all, the condition of if directive will be checked. If it is true, then the font size will become 45 pixels. If it is false, then this code won't be executed and the condition of else if statement will be checked. If it is true, then the font size of the heading element will become 30 pixels. But if it's false as well, then the style inside the else statement will be applied to an element and the font size will become 15 pixels. Let's see it practically. I'm going to select H3 heading element and include mixing heading size. As an argument, let's insert here, for example, large. So if we save, then the font size of the heading element will become 45 pixels. Let's check the compiled code. So as you can see, the font size equals 45 pixels. It happened because we inserted here large as an argument and the condition inside the if statement became true. In the same way, if we write here medium, then the condition of else if statement will be true and the font size of the heading will become 30 pixels. And lastly, if we insert here something different from large or medium, let's say small, then none of those conditions will be true and the code inside the else statement will be executed. As you see, the font size of the H3 heading element is 15 pixels. Alright, so that's the way how if directive works in SAS. It might be helpful and handy in some cases, so I hope everything was clear for you. Okay, so this was the last topic of our crash course. Hopefully it was interesting and helpful and you learned some new stuff. SAS is a really cool and great technology, so you can learn and use it in your projects. We plan to release a couple of SAS projects on our YouTube channel as well. So if you like this video, then please thumbs up, comment below, share it, subscribe to our channel and click the bell to get the notifications on coming tutorials. Alright, that's it, see you in the next video.